We're flying a VFR cross country in Sweden. Wait, Dad, why do we need life jackets? So if we weren't flying, how long would it take us to get to this place? It would take five hours, maybe. And we're getting there in 49 minutes. So I'm at Hesleflugforening, the largest flying club in the Nordic region. I think I pronounced it right. Flying general aviation in Europe has always seemed like a bit of a daunting task. Seeing airspace like this was intimidating, but I was lucky to work with some really awesome people in the community in Sweden. And over the next few months, I'll be publishing episodes to share the experience, but I'd also like to engage with you guys directly to try to answer questions that you might have about flying in this region. So please share them in the comments and I'll build them into the upcoming episodes. Well, I think you did very good. Speaking in the radio today worked really nice. The Swinglish version of English. Swinglish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'll be staying at this World War II base on an island off the coast of Sweden, and I'm excited to fly this Cessna 150 when we get there. This episode covers the VFR cross country from the mainland in a Piper Aero. Temperature 1, 2, 2.5, QNH 1015. Head to Pascal. This was Vesterlos, 80s. Information Sierra. And we're gonna go over open water for 20 minutes, which sounds scary to me. I had the girls with me for this adventure as it was one of the many things we planned on doing in 2020. This is pretty exciting. This is the first of the International Flight Chops year. Hello! We are boarding a plane. A lot of those plans were cancelled for all the obvious reasons, but we did manage to make it here to do a lot of flying with this club. They've got a really cool system in place to help foreign pilots be able to fly here. And the main instructor that I work with flies basically everything. My name is Patrick, flying here in Sweden, commercial pilot, but I find this more interesting to fly actually. That Clem 35 episode has already been published. Check it out if you missed it. But for now, let's get into this one. All right, that one's rolling. I'm gonna roll this one. Should I get out of the shop maybe? No man, you're here. You're part of the mission. Oh, okay. Robert is flying a slower airplane a few miles behind us. You will soon enter uncontrolled airspace. There is no reported traffic in on flight level 75. Thank you. Yeah, I go Papa. Lord Papa is Robert. Climb to flight level two. Our uh, other friend point again. flying after us. Okay, so whenever you need this, I'll help you navigate this. Yeah, but because I have no, no clue how this works. So yeah, you have, you have to run the four flights. Yeah, that's app. good, man. I showed the plan. Well, this is part of it. I want to teach you guys how this works. Yeah, it supports it. Interesting. Okay, so this is. I just did direct to just yeah. so that I could pack it because that's a cool feature with four flight. If you do this, do the red. Mm -hmm. So I say pack, and it's going to check what we need. So we need new no tans and weather pack. So that's what's yeah. cool, when you pack it, it, it gets all of it. So when we file and brief, it'll put it all there so we can look at it. You get like a that's briefing briefing nice. package. Yeah. yeah. So we're yeah. going to be flying over water today. You want to start there? Yeah, we're going to fly. It's an about one hour flight. About half the way is over the water. We're going to land on an island. The plan is to fly pretty high. So I guess seven five is a good flight level. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to type in the route? Is this different yeah. than what I put? So I clear this out? A little bit. Can you drag on the on the map? So you're there you go. We put it on the VR station there, Trusa. And we can choose Nav no, Trusa VR. Perfect. Yeah. And then we go down to a R nav point. This one. Okay, so we need that. Okay. Yeah. Go down. And then we can choose. Waypoints, hold on. Ah, nice. And then we're gonna go to to this airfield up here. Okay. Private airfield. So I, I, just, I yeah, that's right. Just take it. I changed the destination oh. to airports. Boom. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now we have our our route here. Patrick did a great job with my familiarization training, as it was my first flight in an arrow. How you guys doing back there? You good? Good. But this episode won't get into the standard ops so much as we'll be focusing on the differences flying here versus North America, starting with altimeter settings and radio work. All right, so before I take off, we're gonna do flight Come controls. Up, Romeo. All right, turn, runway one nine, three, take and correct. Turn, runway one nine, and Instruments, they check that, altimeter is set based on uh, ATIS. Is the field elevation correct? It is around 20, so it's within limits, yeah. It's uh, pretty close to sea level here. Oh, okay. Good. Northerly wind, six knots, good visibility, no clouds. 11 degrees, and that's Celsius in Europe, yeah, everywhere we, we, it's a Celsius, Celsius yeah, yeah. yeah. And Q 
Q and H instead of altimeter setting. Right. I don't know what you use in Canada. Inches. We're we're twenty nine nine two is. The yeah, that's ah, the yeah. altimeter setting. Mercury inches. Yeah. Here it's uh, millibars or okay. Uh, yeah. Hectopascals. So they actually. don't even give it to you in uh, inches. No. Right? It's like, no. no. This is what you got and do. for reference. 1013 is the same as the standard, 2992, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Girls ready to go? Yeah. Okay, so this is the time for you guys to be quiet, okay? All right, so I'm going to say uh, Westeros Tower, it's uh, now I can truncate the last three. Uh, the first one and the last two, so Sierra Bravo November is the shortening of, uh, oh, okay, of our so, call sign now. All right, that's different than we do it. And I still screw this up and read back the first one, but then the last three, not the last two, every time because that's what I'm used to doing at home. At Westerners Tower, it's Sierra Kilo Bravo November holding short of uh, one nine at Echo, ready for departure. Sierra so Bravo November, Levi Golf Bono, 1,500 feet to Bordeaux, Squawk 5732. 5732, 1,500 below uh, via the golf course. Anything about the airspace that we want to talk about or anything unique or different about? One thing that's a little bit unique when flying to this island Gotland out here is that um, it is Sweden, but we are crossing international borders. Okay. So we need to file an ATS flight plan. So more or less of the flight will be controlled. When we start, we, we depart Westeros. We're going to climb up in the TMA uh, over Stockholm. And then when we fly out over the coast here, we're going to get out of the TMA for a short while we're gonna fly into uncontrolled airspace over the ocean and then approaching Gotland the island they have another TMA there for the Visby, Visby control. We're gonna touch the northeast part of the Visby control zone before or a TMA before we descend below and the airport we're gonna land is a private uncontrolled airfield. Our destination Bunge, no notams found same for Eskilstuna as we fly over and then we have some en route no thumbs. Okay. Wait, so no th weather and no thumb checks out to be good. Nothing okay. special. Cruise altitude. 75. 7000. So how do we how do we say this on the radio? Flight level 075 or flight level 75. Okay. So that's gonna be hard for me to wrap my head around saying that, but that's okay. <laughs> this is there for giving. Yeah. yeah, but no, it's good, it's good, this is what you need to know. Yeah. So is there anything else we didn't say in this briefing? I think one thing, uh, like in Sweden when we leave the control zone, there are checkpoints. Okay. So uh, we're probably going to go for one that's called mm -hmm. Golf Banan, uh -huh. which means golf. And then golf, golf course. course. <laughs> yeah. And then who are we talking to, just traffic advisory? Or? No, it's a the tower is going to be open, it. so it's a okay. towered airport. So if I was not familiar, that would be a waypoint I would try to find on here, probably. There you see it. Oh, got it. Okay, so yeah. that's the triangle right there. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay, so that's not even hard for a foreign person to figure that out. Uh, it is. Okay, so my clearance is to line up. Bravo November, runway one nine, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff one nine, Sierra Kilo, Bravo November. Clear for takeoff. Fuel pump is on. Mixture reach. Props will forward. Yep. And now smooth and gentle, full power. And now keep the stick a little bit in the middle here, okay. because it's a T tail, so we don't don't won't get any. Efficiency for after we get up to some speed. Power is set, airspeed is alive, engine temperature and pressures are good, eyes outside. Around uh, 60 knots is a good uh, speed to rotate. There you are. Comes. Time bound with around 80 knots. Okay, so we'll wait on gear because we have one remaining. Exactly, and just keep the full power. This time is GMT plus two. Ah, okay, so we put the local time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's we try so that. It's making your life easier. Yeah, yeah. So you don't need to think. Yeah, okay. it thinks for you. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes this is too much. Yeah. Ready to file. Forty-four for your minutes yeah, so now. That's uh, correct. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Cool. Final flight plan. All right. mm -hmm. Let's see if this works. Yeah. And Westeros departure at Sierra Kilo Bravo November, fifteen hundred over the golf course. So it was pretty cool to see a flight plan get filed through ForeFlight in Sweden. That was my first time seeing it work there, and these guys hadn't seen it work there. It's since been upgraded, and lots of new things are available for ForeFlight in Europe. This was 2019. Anyway, for the rest of this flight, I'm going to skip normal ops and really just try to focus on the differences flying here and the things that I learned from these guys. Yeah, so the clearance was now, so we're cleared in the sector Westeros, the TMA area, towards Trusa, which means we can turn along our, our track and cleared up to 2,500 feet. Okay, so back to climb. Exactly. 25. 
And they also informed us about the restriction area, 37, which is this one. It's active, which means we can't fly through this one. So we need to probably go a little bit north of our track here. Okay. And none of that was a surprise as we'd covered this in the briefing. We also have some danger areas outside here of the coast, which means we need to get clearance to fly through those if they are even... So the military activity basically or...? Yeah, mostly. Most of the time they are not open, but we anyhow need to, uh, to call up the ATC and ask. Uh, permission to cross. Permission to cross. Uh, NOTAMs would tell us that as well. Yeah, you can check yeah. in the NOTAMs. Yeah. So we maybe hold this heading so that we miss it or a little yeah, bit? Yeah, there we are. Yeah, exactly. So if you fly parallel on the track we have here, yep, I think we will uh, go outside. So that's going to be good. And yeah, we're at 2,500 climbing. Yes. All right. How are you guys doing back there? Good. All right. I'm should, good. should we isolate them so they can talk? Or is it going to be this busy the whole time? We can do that if you like. We can right. isolate. We take the yeah. crew here. Yeah. So okay. now we could talk. Okay, so they're gone. They are. <laughs> exactly. You guys being bilingual is so impressive how fast you can switch between languages. <laughs> but, but isn't it the same for you with French and English? I don't, I'm not very good with French. Okay, I see. Yeah. Right, 100 to go. Yeah, check. Sierra Echo Kilo Bravo November, contact Stockholm Control, 120.155. 120.155, Sierra Kilo Bravo November. So that's different. I'm not used to three digits after the decimal place, and I cannot get that readback correct for the truncated tail number. And Stockholm Control, it's uh, Sierra Echo Kilo Bravo November on the way to Tango Ro Romeo Sierra 2500. Hello, Sierra Echo Kilo Bravo November, Stockholm Radar Contact. To maintain 2,500 feet, I'll call you back in uh, one and a half minutes. Okay, we'll maintain 2,500 feet, Kilo Bravo November. Oh, perfect. Okay, so if down. we go 22 and 23, uh, that's good. And, yeah. and here, you, we only go, I mean, we see the restriction area coming up. So if we, I think we're going to parallel here, yeah. go beside it. That's perfect. All right, she's trimmed pretty good now. Yeah, I see. 125 knots indicated. 117 uh, ground speed. Slightly less than what we planned on, but I think we have some more headwind here. So here you have a view of Sweden. <laughs> the uh, area is uh, the third biggest uh, lake in Sweden. Yeah, okay. From November, climb to flight level uh, 75. Climb uh, flight level 75, kilo Bravo River. And then we'll see if we reach flight level 75. I think. Uh, we have to stay below the clouds here, so we, we take what we get and then we just inform the, the ATC that yeah. we'll see. And since we got flight level already, we need to change our altimeters. Oh yes, to uh, right. standard, which is then 1013 hectopascals. And uh, we can do the climb check, I suppose that will take care of what we have to do more. Temperature good, I can. I have some heating here if we want more heat. I think I'm good, we can ask them. Know what to do? Um, should I press it? Or? Should this there you go. Do you guys want any kind of change in temperature? Are you good? I'm good. Okay. I open it a little bit here. I'm freezing by my feet. <laughs> yeah, whatever you need, yeah, I'm good. Okay, so you guys want me back to isolate, and if you need us, you just tap my shoulder? Yeah, yeah, that's probably best. Okay. okay. Climb flight level 75, Sierra Golf Papa. Uh, that's it. So the minute you get the clearance to the flight level, you, you change your altimeter. So for us, for us, it's uh, not until you cross in. When you cross 180 or 18,000. Yeah. Since we are, we we won't reach 75 now because of the clouds here. So probably we're gonna level off below, which means that uh, we're still gonna be on the on the on the uh, altitude. altitude so. Oh, when did the flight level start? At six. Uh, transition level was six zero. So it started at six. So if we if we need to stay below seven five or actually below six zero, we need to change it back to to uh, to the uh, QNH again. And transition altitudes vary all throughout Europe, so it's pretty handy to have callouts in ForeFlight to help with this. Climbing through transition altitude. This example is in Denmark, and the transition altitude is as low as 3,000 feet. So I could definitely see a Canadian or American pilot getting caught out by that one. 
This is good. According to the Garmin, we have just passed the restriction area to the right. I don't know what uh, four flight says. It's coming three thousand back at three Total seven zero four ten Stockholm radar contact climb to flight level right. six zero. Which means that from this point we could actually go direct to uh, through Sa the the Tango Romeo Sierra VUR. So this is when it became clear we weren't going to get to flight level seven five. Yeah, Stockholm Control, it's Sierra Kilo, Bravo November, uh, looking like we need to stop here at 4,000 for the clouds. Bravo November, audio, uh, maintain 4,000 feet on Coleman back when you need higher. Uh, we'll maintain 4,000, Sierra Kilo, Bravo November. We had briefed that we need to change back from standard to the nearest Q&H setting, but ATC also had our backs on that one. Sierra Bravo November, Q&H is 1014. Uh, 1014, Kilo Bravo River. 1014, then we're back on the flying at altitude at the QNH. So that's something a foreign pilot would need to know that's uh, not uh, common uh, sense to us. So. It is low, uh, low uh, uh, flight levels. And even the fact that you change it when you talk about it, not when you get there. That's different. You can do, actually, you can do as you like. Um, I, I personally, when I get the flight level, I change the altimeter right away to standard to have it done. Uh, but the, the latest you change it is when you pass the transition altitude, which is the same as you do in the uh, America, I guess, that you change it when passing. Right. You, you can do it here as well. Okay, so either way. Yeah, but for me, if I don't change it right away, I forget it. That's the, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like it will cooperate for us to climb over the water. That looks good, actually. Do you think it's a big difference with the radio traffic and the the, uh, the radio it's between? A, it's amazing how much the accent does make it like, I'm, 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 as you see, I keep asking for readbacks. Yeah. And I think also the frequency is having this many digits is not normal, yeah. right? It's still normally two digits after the decimal, right? Exactly. We have entered into the, the new channel spacing here with the 8.33 between. We have uh, all, all, always three digits now. Or decimals. Uh, single axis auto autopilot. Yeah, exactly in the in the roll plane, and it works. We try to use it. Uh, the heading bug works. Uh, in heading mode, it works. It uh, it flies a little bit like this. It wobbles a little bit, but out well done. And then you push heading on, and then it runs by the heading bug. Seems to be more uh, sloppy than I was. <laughs> Gonna find it in a minute? Yeah, but this, this works. That's good. And we're level, so we're good there. Power's good. Looks like the clouds uh, disappears over the ocean, so... Exactly what we need, yep. yeah. This episode was pretty dense, so I ended up cutting it here, and I'll save the rest of the water crossing for the next one. And as you see, about halfway is over water, so we're gonna have around 30 minutes over water. So again, please leave comments for anything you'd like to learn about flying in Europe. We're trying to share as many insights as we can and fit them into the upcoming episodes from this series. We are still in gliding range to get back to our uh, and we can barely make it back now. <laughs> Maybe some little small island or something. So stay tuned for that next one, and until then, keep your flight chops sharp. It looks like we'll survive for at least an hour. Yeah, uh, you mean on the water temp? Yeah. <laughs>